Hola, mis queridos. ¿Cómo estás, mi amo Alicia? Hello, my kittens. How are you? My name is Allison, and today we are playing Nancy Drew Labyrinth of Lies Collector's Edition. I am super excited because today we are just playing more Labyrinth of Lies. I know I always say I'm super excited, but I'm just, I'm glad we're on this game. We're finally on the last game. Well, technically not the last. There's still Tomb of the Lost Queen. I look forward to when I get back to playing Tomb of the Lost Queen, of course. But I'm just glad that I'm playing this game because I actually happen to love learning about Greek mythology. It's always so fascinating. Well, Greek and Roman mythology because they kind of go with each other hand in hand. Just because the gods are basically the same people just with different names. That's what kind of annoys me. <laughs> anyway, I actually really... Whoops. I actually really like this menu. <laughs> Do you see all those lines and cracks and stuff? I mean... You can't really see the strokes, but you can slightly tell that it's a painting. It's incredible. I wish I knew how her interactor did that, down to the minute detail. <sighs> That's just so weird. You can almost see the angles of the cracks of the paint. Almost. I mean, that's just my opinion. Okay, so, before I tell you the difference between Collector's Edition and the regular game, I do want to mention her interactive bases all of their video games off the Nancy Drew book series. And the Nancy Drew book series originally started in 1930. It's been going on for almost 90 years. Her interactive opened its doors though in 1995. That's a pretty long time as well. They've been going on strong for like about what? For almost 15 years now. That's pretty cool. Doing a fresh start with Midnight in Salem for their 15th year. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. I, I, that's probably why they put off the date, really. It wasn't just because they were behind on making the game, but they wanted to make sure that the date was closer to their 15-year anniversary. That's pretty neat. <laughs> As I was about to say, Labyrinth of Lies is based on the Greek symbol mystery number 60, and that is actually from the main series, the original series of Nancy Drew, which is pretty neat. I actually did some research, and it turns out there's five different bindings of it, I think. The original company, Grossa and Dunlap, or however you pronounce it, Grossa and Dunlap, I don't know. They like to restart the series every so often, just so that not only would the grammar of the books be up to date, but so would the stories be a little more modern and stuff like that. And so, with the research that I did, I found five different covers. Five completely different covers. I will try to put them up as often as I can throughout the video. If not, well, uh, you can at least see at least three or four of them in the previous video. And I actually did read the book, Greek Symbol Mystery. It's actually really good. I did see some similarities. I'm not going to mention them because I will be probably reviewing that at the end of the video. I've already been talking quite a bit, so I want to get to the differences between collectors and regular game. So her interactive, they like to give us Nancy Drew fans a little bit of a challenge. The only way you can get the collector's edition is if you pre-order it. After the game is released, you can no longer get the collector's edition. Although if you go to her interactive's shop website, shop page, you can actually find a game or two that are actually selling the collector's edition. I guess they ran out of the original copies, the regular copies I mean. Yeah, whatever they have in stock right now for their games, that's what's left. They're not going to be printing any more of them, uh, making any more of them, which is unfortunate because those games are so freaking popular. A lot of people are going to be mad, disappointed, freaked out. Anyway, what is on the collector's edition basically depends if Nancy has a cell phone in the game. And in this one, she does. On her cell phone, she gets phone charms, mini games, and those mini games are usually from other games of Nancy Drew. And if you're lucky, random texts from a certain someone. And that certain someone is usually either Ned Nickerson, Bess Marvin, George Fane, or one of the Hardy Boys. And we are lucky because in Labyrinth of Lies, we're already communicating with the Hardy Boys. So I wonder who our random texts are going to be from. We'll see. So, there are actually two more things that I want to bring up. One of them is, with every single Nancy Drew game, you actually start with a pretty cool feature, and that is you get a choice of two detective levels at the start of a game. There's Amateur Sleuth and Master Sleuth. Amateur, you get regular puzzles, hence available detailed task list. With Master Sleuth, it's a little different. Now, before number 28's Ghost of Thornton Hall, 
basic task list meant no task list whatsoever. Like the only thing on that task list would be saying, I'm a senior or master detective. I don't need a task list. You just click on that and check it off and you don't need that task list anymore throughout the game. Fortunately, with the updates, with the new interface that Turn Tractor put with the latest games, basic task list means just that. You actually do have a task list. It's pure and simple. It's not as detailed, but you do have a task list nonetheless. I'm actually really excited about that because next year I will be playing Master Sleuth on all the games. Wish me luck because I suck at playing games without a task list. Without hints. Oi. <laughs> It's going to be a real challenge for me. And the last thing is, if anything, anything in this video does not look familiar, it is because you have not been keeping up. Please, please, please check the description box below. There's a previous video as well as the playlist. I recommend the playlist because it will have everything that I've done so far with Nancy Drew, The Lap of the Flies. And let's go ahead and get into the game. Oh, shoot. I completely forgot. There are two features that were added with the interface with this pretty cool menu screen. One is the fast convo, which I will show in the game on how to do that. I don't know how I'm going to do it just because there are a lot of conversations that are needed for the story. And the other feature involves the spoiler free achievement. Now with the spoiler free achievement, it's part of the hint system. The description for the spoiler free achievement is that you have to complete the entire game either on master sleuth or on Amateur Sleuth without using any of the hints on that hint system, or at least using the red solution box from those hints. And I will show you what I mean by that. So let us go ahead and get into the game so that I can show you. Um, we're going to be going here, and I'm going to be quick about this. Um, so, for instance, here, this. Ooh, nice. Okay. So we actually have a second hint to this, which is nice, which means we're at an area where it does have an idea about the password because originally it was just one hint. This here is a box. It Originally it starts with a loading bar that kind of goes from here to, to the end, but normally it's just one basic hint and that basic hint is either generic or specific enough. If you can't understand that hint, it is either because you are too far behind or too far ahead in the game. Just keep on playing that game until the hint makes sense and you'll be able to complete that task. Other times, there will be hints like this where it has a second one or more than that. And then it comes to a red box that says, I need a solution. That is the last resort when it comes to trying to get the spoiler free achievement. Don't use that red box solution unless you absolutely need it. Unless you're desperate enough that you need it. So I'm going to go through the task list real quick because this th this place that we're at right now is kind of on a time frame. Still have to haven't can't check ah. that haven't done that. can't check haven't still have to haven't done that can't check haven't done okay. that. Okay, so we haven't done anything. Ooh, Thanos. Wait, his real name is Thanos. Okay, is that everyone? Yep, that's everyone. Um, I wonder if Xenia's notes will come in handy. Ooh, does this mean we're stealing the director's copy? Yep, we're stealing the director's copy. Ooh, yeah, we're stealing the director's copy. Stage notes, Grigor's tablet password. Oh, first last repeat. Oh, so we can now open his... Thanos wants to leave a personalized message for our VIPs. Need to make sure they have a key to the poster out front. Oh, we need to find that key then. Alright. I should assemble the image. We kind of got to be quick with this puzzle here. Um... I can't remember if it locks in place or not. It does. Okay. I'm just going to kind of do this row by row just because... Mm, 
might work out. Uh, come on, baby, baby. There we go. Go. We go. Here we are. Booyah. There's more letters. Booyah. Ha ha. Um. Alrighty, that goes there. Um, believe there we go. Oh, right clicking gets rid of it. That's good to know. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. The National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Sounds very official. Yep. And we can do this with one, two, three, four, five, six more. Um, oh hey, I recognize that. That's Way of Warnings of Beverly Academy. Alright. Check. I need your help fixing the fly system since you broke it. Reasonable. How do I do that? Just check the tablet. Um, alrighty then. What's your role in the production? Too many things. In yes, but things are a little more intense this time. Because there are so few of you? Mm-hmm. Why don't you have a larger support crew? Generally we do. But because the background checks were really extensive, we didn't have time to worry about anyone other than ourselves. Ouch. To answer your question, I work the lights and the stage cues. I make sure we've got the right scripts, then I do my best to keep us from killing each other. Aw. Can you show me how to run the light board? I'd love to, but I really don't have the time. You'll find a book on it somewhere. Do you know anything about the stolen art? Too much. Why is that? When it went missing, the police had a long talk with all of us. That's news to me. We didn't want it to become a bigger deal than it needed to be. We all agreed to answer their questions. Melina turned over the tapes, and we turned over our keys and let them search our hotels and cars. Cars too? So if you're all here, it's safe to assume they didn't find anything. I got the sense it was just a formality searching us. Bye-bye. Sure. Talk to you later. Lights and cues. All light cue changes and fly system weight settings originate with Xenia and script notes. Cues will be signed off on by Xenia and Grigor. Look into automation of light cues. Xenia keeps adding to Hermes' role. At this point, I can barely make the cues between scenes. Presents. Sorry. Why does Thanos keep having his lines cut? At this point, I'm carrying the show. This isn't Hermes' story. What gives? Maybe Xenia can explain. Everyone's a critic except me. Apparently my question about Hermes' role was not welcome. If she keeps me running around, I'll hardly be able to get my job done. Interesting. I need to figure out the password according to the notes. Uh, no. Wrong one. So first, last, repeat. Would that be... 
first, last, and repeat. That doesn't make sense. Did I mess up somewhere? First, last, first, last, first. Oh, whoops. Last, first, last. Got it. Uh, Niobe rules. Need to drop in to make sure Niobe is following all of the rules. IRT, replica, work. What? We will require the correct documentation. Watching the detectives. Just spent a few hours with the detectives. They're talking to each of us about the missing artwork. I convinced the team it will all go faster if we give the okay to search our vehicles, hotels, and homes. Hopefully we can get the show back on the road as soon as possible. I don't like talking to the police. Be the coffee cup. Be the coffee cup. All cleared, obviously. All of our time cards and entry and exits are accounted for. And obviously the searches for of our personal spaces yielded nothing. Thanos was angry, just the same. But I don't care. Looks like we're back to our schedule. Molina was left to go track down the pieces. Supposedly, we'll be getting a new liaison. We'll deal with that as needed. Demeter, I hardly even know her. Ouch. Preparation for my role continues, but now I need to manage Niobe too. She's barely hanging on. I know we need her, but still, she's getting pushed further and further into the shadows. Xenia's wrong about hiring someone that fragile. Dead wrong. I'll do what I can to make it work, but if she can't perform, we've got bigger problems than embarrassment to worry about. I agree. What's in a name? That which any other name is sweet. Plutus casting sheep prepared. I've, even if the rip in the red stitching in my bag, no one will ever suspect the truth behind the sheets and read between those lines. Alrighty. Well. I'm not talking to you until you fix that fly system. Dang it. Well, you, uh, dang it. We're pretty much at the end of the video, so I'm going to save this for the next video. I'm not going to show you what he, even what it looks like because it's crazy this. Crazy, crazy, craziness. But you saw what I did there for the example of Fast Combo, right? It skipped the dialogue. That's basically what it is. It skips the dialogue of either what Nancy is saying or the character she's talking to is saying. It's basically a way to do a speed run or if you're just lazy and want to do the gaming portion instead of paying attention to the story. It's understandable. I mean, I've been there quite a few times. I'm going to go ahead and save it here. Ba bam, ba bam, and say goodbye. Ba bam, save again so I don't make a mistake. Booyah. All right, so that is going to be it, everyone. Oh, right, review time. Heck yeah. So, basically, what I do with my review time is compare and contrast the game with the book and give my opinion about the game, the gameplay, the quality of it, and basically the content, I should say. The graphics and all that jazz. I mean, I'm so used to playing Nancy Drew that it just... I can tell you one thing, it's definitely improved. I mean, compare this to the first game, Secrets Can Kill, you can tell a huge difference. It's improved so much. I actually do prefer this gameplay of it, which kind of scares me because I've heard that Midnight in Salem is an open world gameplay, which freaks me out. Open world gameplay is super overwhelming for me, so I'm nervous of what will happen. I don't like going to locations and then finding out there was nothing there for me to do. It's pointless to have a location in the game like that if it's not important to the story, or if it's not even related to the story. It bugs me. But hey, that's my prerogative. Other than that, you know, I mean, I love point-and-click adventures. I love Nancy Drew. I will never stop playing the games. It's basically my livelihood. I grew up on these games. I mean, I started playing Nancy Drew my last year of junior high, and since then I haven't stopped. I don't think I ever will. I'll still be a faithful Her Interactive patron, but I will fight 
for what is right with our games, what is wrong with our games, and tell them what needs to be improved. Because <laughs> seriously, they will listen to their fans whether they like it or not. It's just sad that they're not being transparent with us when it comes to Midnight in Salem for these past four years. So I think if they were transparent with us about Midnight in Salem, things would have gone much smoother and they probably would have gotten the game done sooner. Despite the fact that next year is their 15th year anniversary. It is what it is. We can't change the past. We can't change what it is. We just got to hope that Midnight in Salem will be a success as far as a financial cause for her interactive. Because otherwise, if it doesn't, if it's not, most likely this will be the last game for her interactive. Which is unfortunate. Because I love these games. I want them to keep making them. And if it's not their last game, they're probably going to go back to making these kind of games. Back to their own personal engine instead of Unity. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's enough of my uh, venting, my review of Labyrinth of Lies and Midnight in Salem, despite that it's not out yet. <laughs> so I gotta get going, everyone. I love you all so, so, so much, my beautiful kittens and viewers. I hope I helped you out at least a little bit in this video. If not, I am not doing my job. <laughs> and I will talk to you all in the next video, which will be Labyrinth of Lies Part 4. A booyah. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, smash that like button like a kitten would. And if you're just now tuning into this channel, go ahead and click, -click, -click that ugly red subscribe button. Make it that beautiful gray as well as that bell icon right next to it. That will notify you of all the videos that I do, which are on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as Sundays and even Wednesdays, which are late videos and vlogs, which rarely happen. And I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am Sweet Rascally Rabbit, saying goodbye. Stay awesome and stay on YouTube! Because you are beautiful. Ah, because you are beautiful. Bow, bow, bow.